Hello, hi everyone. My name is Michelle Kizik and I am the Development Assistant at Historic Hawaii Foundation. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon for a presentation and panel discussion with Lokelani Brandt, Senior Archaeologist at ASM Affiliates, Professor Carrie Inglis, and students from the University of Hawaii at Hilo History Department. Back in 2019, HHF launched our Story Map series. We are thrilled to be continuing the series with a story map of Hilo, focusing on the multi-layered history from the Wailuku to Wailoa River. The discussion this afternoon will share the context, process, and purpose of the Hilo story map, along with reflections from the students themselves, relaying how this project has impacted their view of Hilo, themselves, and their own sense of place. The creation of this story map was made possible by our incredible program partners. Um, Cultural Service Hawaii, the University of Hawaii at Hilo History Department, ASM Affiliates, and the Lyman Museum. This program was supported by the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and Arts through appropriation from the Legislature of the State of Hawaii or, or grants from the National Endowment for the Arts. A few virtual housekeeping items before we begin. Today's presentation is being recorded and also live streamed to the HHF YouTube and Facebook pages where it will be available for viewing immediately afterwards. Please type your questions as they come up in the chat box on the Zoom menu bar. We'll do our best to address as many as we can during the Q&A portion of this afternoon's event. If we do not get to audience questions, our panelists graciously let me know they will happily respond after the event. For those new to Historic Kauai Foundation, we are a statewide nonprofit organization that helps people save historic places. Sites that tell the stories of the multi-layered history of Hawaii, we do this through education, advocacy, assistance, and protection of and for historic places. I would now like to introduce our first presenter, Lokelani Brandt. Lokelani was born in Kailua, Oahu, and raised in Hilo and Puna, Hawaii. She earned her BA in Anthropology and Hawaiian Studies and her Master's in Heritage Management from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. She has successfully led and organized several community-based cultural heritage management programs on Hawaii Island geared towards training local communities on the identification and protection of their tangible and intangible heritage. She currently lives in Hilo, Hawaii with her family and works as a senior archeologist at ASM Affiliates. Welcome, Lokilani. Aloha, mahalo, um, Michelle, for the introduction. Um, I'm really excited to be able to sort of help launch uh, this Hilo Story Map project um, from what was a simple idea to something that became really, um, you know, involved with multiple um, community members and students and different organizations and businesses in Hilo. So I'm really excited, but I'm just gonna sort of, sort of set up a little bit of um, maybe some geographical context for us um, and tell a little bit about my sort of connection to this area. And then talk about um, the process that we went through from start to where we are today and um, the launching of this story map project. Um, and so, the, the moku of Hilo or the Hilo district is, is rather large. Right? And so when we were undertaking this particular project, we had to figure out what we were going to focus on. Right? So as you know, Hilo is on the Eastern side of Hawaii Island. Um, and it really spans all the way from Waiakea Ahupua'a, which you know, touches the Puna district. And it goes all the way up towards Hamakua. Um, and so it, it ends at Kaula Gulch, uh, which is sort of on the boundary near Ookala. And so we're dealing with a really large area. Um, and for this project, we sort of had to narrow that down to something that was manageable for us. And, and also keeping in mind that something like a story map can continuously be added to, right? And so um, that was sort of our first uh, step was just sort of narrowing it down. And so we decided to focus on the coastal portion kind of surrounding Hilo Bay, which is where um, a large, you know, large population had lived during, um, you know, pre-contact, the pre-contact times all the way to the, to very much to this day. 
Um, and, and it has transformed over the years. And so that was sort of the beginning. Um, and in this process, we also had to recognize that um, each of us, including myself, I have a specialized interest in Hilo, um, you know, kind of focusing more on the coastal Waiakea portion. So recognizing that each of us brought something different to the table. Each of other, each of our collaborators, you know, made a contribution that um, would help to tell this story for even just this smaller section of Hilo that surrounds the Hilo One or Hilo Bay section. And so that was uh, sort of the beginning. And I think I was approached back in maybe April from Hawaii Historic Foundation on um, doing this project and and then wanting to partner with UH Hilo on it as well. And so um, with the help of, of you know, Kumu Kerry Ingalls, who was actually one of my former professors when I was a student at UH, um, came on board and, and this project quickly grew um, in terms of its scope and um, additional collaborators came in. We had students um, as well. So this was a very new undertaking for us. We, there was a lot of, of decision making and things we needed to figure out as we go, which is inherent in a project like this. Um, and so um, little by little, we started with sort of identifying those key areas. Um, and that was part of a big, that's always part of the bigger question when we're discussing history of our, of our local places. You know, what stories or what story or what stories are we going to highlight and tell? Because we can at this time tell all of it, um, and which is a, such a monumental task in itself. So we decided to sort of pick really specific places um, and highlight them throughout that section of Hilo. And so what you see in the story map is really a careful selection of uh, places that had you know really good records for them um, and um, sort of tailoring um, that story and looking at time depth as well. Yeah, so looking at sort of, you know, Hawaiian history for Hilo and sort of transitioning into plantation era and, and all of the subsequent that came after the development of us, you know, Hilo as sort of this port town and the, you know, architecture that comes with that. And so, uh, we hope what we put together as far as the story map really captures breadth and depth of um, this portion of Hilo, our, the stories and the history. Um, telling history and, and, and sharing this stuff is very, um, it's, a, it's a careful task that needs to happen. Um, and so one of the discussion points that came up during our early conversations was the idea of making sure that we tell these narratives with proper credit due, um, meaning that we were going to be really careful about including where we got that information from. Um, oftentimes when we, we read local history um, narratives, um, they're, they're just written sometimes without any you know, citations and uh, things of that nature. So that was another thing that we um, wanted to highlight and feature is, is sort of, you know, capturing the importance of where did this information come from? Uh, that way readers and researchers who will be using this and our community that will be using this story map as a tool will know where they can go and look for more information and where they can read the longer version of these ancient stories and things like that. And so um, that was something that we did um, spend a lot of time sort of sorting through and figuring out. Um, let's see. Now, Hilo, you know, I, like I said, I'm, um, I'm originally from Kaneohe on the island of Oahu, but I have been in Hilo since I was six years old. My uh, parents relocated here. And I've lived here all my life. I have two children and I married a Hilo. Um, I'm with a Hilo boy. We've been together for 18 years. And um, Hilo is definitely a place that's close to my heart. And so um, as part of my kind of upbringing, um, I spent a lot of time in this area. I spent a lot of time in Hilo paddling in both Wailoa River at times and in Hilo Bay. 
Um, and so, you know, what was what I didn't know when I was younger was sort of the, the layer history and the stories. And so as I got a little bit older and I you know, attended college, um, that's when I started being exposed to sort of the historical narratives that um, that was written for Hilo. And I was just completely fascinated by it. And after I graduated, I, I taught at Hawaii Community College for a couple of years. And Hilo was always one of those places that I would take my students to. And mostly because what we see today, as far as this section of Hilo is really a kind of a green belt, yeah, sort of an open space. We have lots of parks in this area from Bayfront to Wailoa. Um, and then we have sort of the downtown, you know, our business area. And um, because it's been so transformed, mostly because of our tsunami history, um, what we see today differs dramatically from what you know, the communities from even pre-1960 saw. And so um, it's, it's when you start to get into those stories that you get really um, blown away at how many people actually lived in this area at one time and how people use the area over time from, you know, fish ponds um, to agriculture to, you know, small little predominantly Japanese communities and businesses that were that lined uh, Kamehameha Avenue. Um, and so it's, um, it's always nice to reflect on these stories because they really inform and they really should inform how we think about use of these areas today. And, and they'll shape, right? Because something like tsunamis and Hilo will always so always be a part of our history even going forward. And so um, using the knowledge from our historical records about this place can really help shape how we interact with this space and, um, and guide us so that we um, are in a much better place when we have to use these areas uh, for recreational purposes or for uh, cultural purposes and so forth. Um, um, I'm not sure what else I wanted to share. Um, Andrea, I don't know if there's anything else you want me to discuss. Sure, can you, just, um, can you elaborate a little on the area itself? And I don't recall whether you mentioned it was part of your thesis and maybe you can talk a little about why you chose it and, and the parameters and anything related to that. Okay, cool. yeah, I can. Um, so during my master's thesis, I decided to focus on Hilo. I knew I wanted to sort of delve into Hilo's history, but what I realized was sort of missing from the written accounts that were published was um, what happened to, or what was life in this area like, um, you know, as part of, you know, what is what was the sort of Hawaiian cultural history for this place? And that was where my interest really lied. Um, we had a lot of information written on sort of the plantation history and the tsunami history for Hilo, but the stories that talked about the area during Kamehameha's time and even way before that uh, were fragmented. They were sort of scattered around. And so um, that's what I decided to focus on for my master's was sort of looking at the Hilo, but sort of our Hawaiian cultural history. And specifically, the lower portion of Waiakea, the coastal part, um, in what is what is known today as Wailoa State Park, but what was actually part of a traditional ili kupono, a really specific land division known as Pio Pio. And so that's sort of where my focus was on. Um, and that's where I spent most of my time researching in addition to other areas, but um, that's sort of what my interest was in, was in looking at the Hawaiian cultural history for Pio Pio. And what I quickly realized was that there was a lot of information written about this area. Um, so Pio Pio is a land division, um, an Ili Kupono land division, meaning that it had a very unique status um, in that it was actually retained by either the Ali'i Moku, the district chief, 
or the Ali'i Nui of the island, depending on what time period you're talking about. Um, meaning that it was not actually part of Guayaquil, Abuqua, even though it is within. Um, and so that's sort of my, my area of, of specialization was in um, PO PO. But um, so that was really my contribution. And when I was approached by Hawaii Historic Foundation, and I made it very clear to them, I said, you know, I, I know about Hilo in general, but sort of my area of specialization is in the PO PO section, where there are a number of, uh, you know, significant cultural uh, places, uh, places that were visited by our Ali'i, um, important fish ponds and egg lands. And it's just really layered with so many, um, so many stories, yeah. And so um, recognizing my contribution as part of this was very important for me. Um, and so that's sort of a little bit about my involvement with this um, project and a little bit about myself. Um, it's still an important part um, of my, my work that I do today, even after my master's thesis, um, has been to um, host groups, take groups on, um, you know, whether they're little haumana, little babies, preschool age, or, you know, makua, adult age, um, students, faculty, wh whomever's interested in learning about sort of the Hawaiian culture history for uh, coastal Waikia, that's, you know, part of my life work is to be able to give back to my community in that way, um, in perpetuating those stories. And um, as that's part of um, an ongoing cultural practice, yeah, to ensure that our stories are being told and our history is being remembered. And so that's today part of my life work, um, which is, you know, so when this opportunity came up, um, I, it was a big guess for me because to be able to get these stories to a broader, wider audience was um, important for me. You know, and I, I want to recognize that there are a number of you know longtime Hilo families that um, you know that know a lot about these areas too. Um, and so I hope that you know something like the story map um, is um, helps to trigger those memories in a way that's you know profound and positive, um, and that these stories are you know perpetuated to um, our upcoming generations. Andrea, is there anything else you want to add, Michelle? Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful thoughts and connections to Hilo. It was so nice of you to do this for us and spending all this time kind of creating the story map. And thank you so much. Um, I guess if you're done sharing thoughts, I think I'll go ahead and introduce Carrie. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Carrie Inglis teaches Hawaii and Pacific Islands history at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. She resides in Keaau in the Moku of Puna, but she was born and raised in the Fraser Valley region of British Columbia, Canada. Carrie moved to the island and earned a BA from BYU Hawaii, completed her master's at the University of Toronto and returned to Hawaii to pursue a doctorate in Hawaiian history with complementary fields in Pacific and world history at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Thank you so much for joining us, Kumukai. Aloha mai kako and mahalo Michelle for the intro and, and thank you Lokelani as well uh, for beautifully talking about the project and its beginnings and uh, your, your just so significant contributions to, to getting us started with this. Um, so yes, my, my name is Carrie Ingalls and I, I teach history here at UH Hilo. Um, I live in Kololi in the Ahukuaha of Keaau, which is in the Mokua district of Puna, but I work here, I'm in my office right now, uh, I work at Mo Mokaulele, uh, which is in the Ahukuaha of Waiakea in our district of Hilo. And I mention that because even as a Malahini, I recognize that this such importance to place and thinking about who we are, where we're from and how we connect to the places around us. And this project um, has really brought to light, I think for all of us involved, and I'm especially thinking about my students, um, 
how the Aina is, a, is at the heart of this project and our connections to the Aina and to the community that inhabits this Aina uh, being at the heart of the project. We have been on this wonderful exploration of learning more about the community in which we live. And as Lokelani was saying, you know, there's, there's research that's taken us to um, archival materials, but that's also taken us to talk with community members. And I wanna echo her mahalo to the many community members and families of, of the Hilo area who, um, you know, have, have maintained and, and preserved and continue to tell the stories of the, of the place for us. So we're just so very, very grateful. And um, the project itself, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process and working with the students. Um, some of whom are here today to, to share some of their stories of, of their experience with the project itself. Um, but it is just a beginning uh, and it's a, a beginning of starting to uncover for ourselves. The, the stories have been here as long as people have been here, but for us in this sort of new generation starting to uncover those stories and become better acquainted with them ourselves has really been a big part of our process. So we. Um, we were, were approached by Historic Hawaii Foundation and grateful for that to have this opportunity to be a part of a story map project of Hilo. And then I knew that Lokelani was going to be there to, to help guide us along. And I got really excited and I was like, yeah, we want to do this. Now, how are we going to do it? So um, I have two classes that became a, a part of the, the project itself this semester. It was my Hawaiian Kingdom course and a survey of Hawaii history course. And we turned it into a group project. So we had several groups within each class that were working together on some specific areas within the essentially downtown area of Hilo. So we were looking from Wailoa over to Wailuku, just that area of Hilo. And there are many Ahupuaha within that part of what is downtown. What's the, in the picture behind me? <laughs> um, and uh, those uh, six or seven ahupuaha, we then divided up to the various groups. And the first thing I asked them to do was to go on their own and see what maybe they could find out about that small sliver of the Hilo area for themselves. Because I was hoping that without giving them direct, you know, go look up, um, you know, the history of, of this one place or this one building that they might find some histories, some uh, wahipana, some significant locations or landmarks on their own that weren't already on our list. And that there might be some other layers of discovery that might take place as a result of that. And indeed, some of the groups did come back with locations or significant landmarks that weren't already on our list of places to consider for this first iteration of the story map. But after all of those lists came in, we then took a look at them once more and said, okay, we wanna be sure that we cover certain parts of the, the downtown area uh, and surrounding areas of Hiloone up to, um, up to or across to the Wailuka River area. And so uh, we did then make a few assignments as, okay, we really need some folks to, to look at this location or look at that location and make sure it can indeed be included on the story map. Then it began that the students, I think, started to, to dig in a little further and we encouraged them to look for books on, the, on Hilo's history, for maybe journal articles that had been written, um, to go out and seek and find uh, historical images that could also tell them a story, to go and look into newspaper accounts of Hilo's history, including Hawaiian language newspaper accounts, um, to look at maps, and see what story is being told to them through the maps and to go out and talk to family members or other community members. And, uh, and indeed, we've learned some wonderful little gems. Not all of it's showing up uh, on the, the story map this first round, but um, just some wonderful gems of local history. And uh, again, as a, a Malahini, I've, I've been here working at UH Hilo for 16 years now, um, still learning something new every day about this beautiful place where I live and work. And so um, it's been just this wonderful experience for myself and I'm hoping that uh, it's been something similar for my students. 
We wanted to show you briefly uh, just a little bit of the, the website itself. And maybe if Andre, if you can share screen here in a moment and um, we'll get a look at what the story map is looking like. Uh, we're incredibly grateful to Natalie Andreka of Cultural Surveys Hawaii for putting this together for us. I think as folks can imagine, when you have a project that's squeezed into one semester, well, that sounds like a long time, 16 weeks, uh, it goes by very quickly. And so we've been doing all this research, trying to organize our materials and bring things together, and then uh, just handed it all over to Natalie, who very quickly has put this together for us. So we're just thrilled to see the outcome and, and just actually very excited to see this culmination of so much work and so many hands putting their, their uh, efforts into this. So um, when you get a chance to look at the site and the link will be provided at the end of today's presentation, you'll be able to explore some of the same places that we've explored. And we've got contemporary images, we've got historical images, and we have some write-ups um, for each of these locations. Some of them, we were able to go a little more in depth than others, um, but they all have a little something to offer there. So if we look at, just start with the first site, Mogola, uh, you know, the Pico of Hilo, um, such an important place, a place of healing, a place of life, um, a place of health, a an island of health, and uh, I think a favorite place for so many people who come to the Hilo area. And so just be able to explore a little bit more about its history and its connection to, to the community and our connections to it. Um, again, very rewarding. Um, if you could scroll down, Andrea, to I think number nine or so, which is Pio Pio, which is at the heart of Lokelani's research um, that she did for her master's thesis. And this was just, uh, this, if anybody gets a chance, read her thesis. It is just a wonderful exploration of understanding the layered history of the Pio Pio area of uh, the Hilo district. Um, and I don't know if Lokilani wants to jump in and say anything here, but um, it, yeah, it's just amazing. Loke, have you seen this yet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of was playing around with it just before we got started. This is, um, so it's really cool to see all the photos and everything sort of coming together. But um, yeah, um, so we featured a couple of places in Pio Pio. Um, Michelle, is there a way you can sort of zoom out of the map a little bit? Yeah, I'm trying to zoom out a little bit more. So uh, I know there was a question and, and I know we have a Q&A portion, but I did want to answer, um, for those of you wondering about where Pio Pio is, um, it is a small, like I said, it's a small little land division um, that sort of extends from where Just Cruising Coffee is by Kilauea Avenue, and then it wraps around um, kind of on the western side of the Wailoa, uh, Wailoa River, and then it comes all the way out towards the mouth of Wailoa on the uh, Hilo Bay side, yeah. Um, and so that's sort of this, you know, little, little land division there. Um, but there were a number of um, really cool elements that I was able to identify through my research. And um, one of them was, you know, here we have number 11 on our story map, which is sort of the home of uh, Princess Ruth Eddie Kualani. So it shows up on a, her house actually shows up on a map of Hilo from 1891. And digging through um, different archives, uh, Bishop Museum and State Archives, we're able to actually find some photos of the house. And so uh, this is a, one of the photos that you see here. The house stands where sort of present day, um, is it Chevron gas station right on the corner? <laughs> no, that's there. And, and as you can see in this particular photo, the house is in the background where the trees are. Um, and in the foreground is actually the Waiolama River that has been since covered over um, and filled in and is now part of our Hilo Bayfront soccer fields. Um, and so this is a really, really, really great photo because it really captures that. And um, we can see there's some other, the Boundary Commission testimony for that area also spoke about uh, the bamboo grove that was located behind her home. Um, if you go back one more photo, um, to click on the left one more photo, you can see that large bamboo grove in the back of the house. Um, and then a small little smokehouse. 
Um, and the testimony also described a small smokehouse and this particular um, structure here. But yeah, just another really cool example of um, things that we find when we spend some time looking around and um, being willing to go down the rabbit hole, because that's really what it is. Sometimes you find these little cues of things on maps or little notes and you just chase them. And so that's how you can sort of look into and find some of these really amazing um, gems, yeah. Um, and Shinmachi is another one, predominantly Japanese community um, established right around the uh, 1900s. Um, and it was there up until the 1960 tsunami. And so now that's all part of um, that open space between Kamehameha Avenue and the White House State Park. Yeah. But I'll hand it back to you, Kumukai. Thank you. Mahalo yeah. Nui. Yeah, so, you know, again, we're just, we're really excited to see the, the outcome here and, and to have the story map um, that we will be able to all explore. Um, but just as exciting to me has been the process, uh, the learning process and the working with students to, uh, to be a part of their exploration of Hilo's history. So I want to ask uh, my, my six students who are here to turn on their cameras. We're going to start our panel discussion here shortly. Um, many students have been a part of this process, as I've already said, 45 students. Uh, 45 students working in groups, sometimes working independently, all these different moving parts, bringing the materials together and having this experience uh, together. And uh, I just want to, I want to thank them all. Some of them are in our audience. Uh, I just want to thank them all for their contributions and recognize that there's many, many hands and labors that have gone into this project. There are six students here today to share a little bit more about what they experienced, what they learned, and I've asked them each to, to take a few minutes to talk about that. Um, they were very kind to say yes as soon as I asked them, and I, I'll just want the other students to know I had I had a backup list, so if any one of these folks had said no, I would have been asking somebody else, and so um, I'm just really thankful to these folks for agreeing to speak and, uh, and know that they, they represent you all so very well. Um, so uh, we're going to start with Stefani Pelletier. She was in my Hawaiian Kingdom class, and um, she's going to share a little bit about her experiences with our project. Go ahead, Stefani. <laughs> I'm giggling because everyone's been calling me Stefani lately, and it's just Stephanie. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was uh, in uh, Kumukai's history um, uh, Hawaiian Kingdom class. Um, the the group that we were that I was in was uh, our area was Punahoa 2, um, which has got some buildings that um, are still there today. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm coming going back to school to finish a degree in performing arts that I never finished. Uh, I knew nothing about Hilo before I started going to school this semester at University of Hawaii at Hilo. Uh, so this has been partially a way taking uh, this class has been partially a way for me to learn about the culture because I knew nothing. I'm come from San Francisco. I live in Kona and I've been here since 2019. So it's all very new to me. So um, this has been, a, it's such a great project to be able to learn a bit about Hilo's history, um, to go along with all of the things we've been learning generally about the Hawaiian kingdom um, up until 1900. Um, so in Punahana, Punahana 2, we, our focus that we ended up having, I, I was in a group, we had three of us and then it dropped to just two. Um, so Kamalani, uh, Fukumitsu and I were the two folks. Um, Kai was super sweet and said we didn't have to do all of the locations, but we decided to just do it, get it done. So um, we had some places that people are, you know, would be aware of. Uh, the Lyman Mission House and Museum was one. Uh, the Homolani Memorial Park, which previously was known as Halai Hill Cemetery, was another one. We had the Samuel Henry Crest building as well, and uh, Halai itself, which um, Kamalani learned that it's often known that it, uh, people would call it Halai Hill, and it actually isn't a reference to Halai, was a reference to the forest at the bottom of the hill, not actually the hill itself, which was a really neat thing to learn. And then, of course, my favorite thing, since I'm a performing arts major, 
was the palace theater. Um, so I learned a lot, a lot about uh, just the history of all of like my focus myself was palace theater and the Homolani Memorial Park. Um, but the um, behind me, you can see I work for the Aloha Theater in Kealakekua. So it was a really neat thing to be able to learn about how theater was um, in in the 1800s mainly because our our all of our buildings really and the cemetery all came uh, were built or created in the 1800s. So there was a lot of information on each of their websites. Uh, there, there, luckily for us, we had a lot of information just from their websites because the, the Lyman Museum and the cemetery and the Palace Theater um, and the Crest Building all still exist and have fantastic historical information on their website about their, you know, from their inception to where they are now, uh, the development. And um, one of the things that I thought was really, really interesting was just to see how small a town Hilo really is, because the connections between people are across, you know, all of these places. We had the Lymans come up in many different places. They're the first person interred in at Halai Hill Cemetery was a member of the Lyman family. So it's, there's this connection between people in all these different places throughout Hilo that I thought was such a small town thing being mostly from San Francisco. We think of that as being a small town, but not in the same way that Hilo is a small town. Um, uh, let's see, Punahoa, we learned also that Punahoa means companion spring. Um, that's one of the things that I really like about as I've been learning is all of the meanings of all of the Hawaiian words. Um, the fact that the first map that uh, we we were shared was from 1891 of Hilo and all of the street names are different. And it was really nice to see that 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 we it was Hilo was returned to having street names that are Hawaiian cultural people or, you know, words that are Hawaiian versus having names that are named after Howley folks who came in and bought land and everything else. So I, I really liked that. It was fun to go a rock, walk around downtown and kind of figure out, okay, so palace leaders on this street. So that means it, it was on this street on that map. So um, yeah, it was really, it was a really, really great thing. I found a lot of, uh, um, information in the I got a trial subscription to newspapers.com and did a lot of research in there um and it was it was kind of neat because my with my focus being the palace theater and the cemetery it's hard to search for things on the cemetery because pretty much I would get 5,000 hits that are obituaries <laughs> so that was a little tricky to find like news information about the cemetery itself that weren't showing up just as um notices of people passing. Uh, the same with the Palace Theater. There was a lot of um, advertisements for people coming through uh, who were doing shows at the Palace Theater. Like the Palace Theater used to host the Mickey Mouse Club, apparently, in, uh, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> which was really, really fun to find out that it became, it was a really big family place for people to go. Um, but yeah, there was so much so much information. Um, I didn't even know about the tsunamis that happened as well. So interestingly, the like as a little tidbit, the organ, the, the pipe organ that exists at the Palace Theater is a recreation of the original organ with pieces of it. It had moved from the Palace Theater to the Hilo Theater, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, before the tsunami. And then the tsunami came and destroyed everything in that theater. And they were able to save some of the pieces and find another of the same model of pipe organ and recreate it. So that is what exists in this, like a Frankenstein version of the original pipe organ in the Palace Theater, which is really cool. A wonderful story, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, mahalo, Stephanie. I uh, really appreciate you sharing. Um, our next presenter was also in the Hawaiian Kingdom class and uh, I'm going to have Jared Goodwin now share some of his experiences with our project. Go ahead, Jared. Uh, mahalo kumukai. First off, um, mahalo everyone at the Historic Hawaii Foundation. It's totally an honor. Um, so, hello, my kako. My name is Jared Goodwin. Um, I was born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii. And uh, I'm actually an environmental science major, but more recently, I've also taken up Hawaiian studies as my minor. 
And my group and I were responsible for researching the Waiakea Ahupua, um, specifically the land that sits between P.O.P.O. and Kuku'au. And so in actually doing the research for the Hilo Story Map Project, um, our group first began by overlaying um, the historical 1891 map of Hilo, uh, which we were provided with onto the most recent satellite imagery to scale. Um, so actually Mahalo Lokilani Brand for actually showing this technique to our Hawaiian Kingdom class. It actually was very useful. So, you know, it kind of gave us a tech, it kind of gave us a, a grounding of like what was there and what wasn't. So basically, this is where we got a lot of our search terms um, for the historical databases, um, especially many Vahipana uh, that were way beyond my current knowledge um, that I just didn't know existed simply because I haven't seen any historical maps before. Um, in regards to conducting a historical research, I found that um, it was a very involved process. You know, coming from a science background, um, usually we're only looking at scholarly articles, but when it comes to history, um, the sources are very broad. You could be getting, um, you know, sources from, you know, journals to books. But what I found very useful was things like government documents, um, sort of, you know, from the, the Mahele of 1848, um, testimonies from Kamaaina. Um, there's a very broad amount of sources, and I found that that was very interesting. Um, and when it comes to the Ahupua Waikea, so... Um, the literary translation for Waikia actually translates to broad waters. And as the name implies, um, the Ahupua is highly regarded for its many local ia or fish ponds. So um, one of the fish ponds was called Hanalei Fish Pond. And so I, I know that in modern day Wailoa um, and the fish pond back then, uh, you know, it was highly regarded for its sustenance for the many people that lived off of it at the time. And, I found that that was very interesting as it's, you know, sort of a tradition that still continues to this day. Um, and something else that I found interesting within the Ahupua Waikea was that many mo'olelo tell of an ancient kapu that was actually enforced. Um, so many natural features such as rock walls and um, a gulch in the area was used as contemporary boundary markers. And this was actually a way to regulate the distribution of natural resources. Um, you know, so I found that people had their specific territories and I thought that was very interesting, you know, and how they all respected that at the time. Um, and another one that actually coincided with our Ahupua'a was uh, Waialama Marsh. And so, you know, as Lokilani mentioned earlier, it's actually occupied by soccer fields near Kamehameha Avenue. And um, these are just, one, this is just one of the many examples of Vahipana that, you know, as a, as a, even a Kama'aina of Hilo, I just had no idea existed up until this project. And, you know, I'm really grateful for that because I would have never known. Um, and so now I know that, you know, future generations, you know, will know because of research like this. And so like going beyond the historical research, um, the Hilo Story Map project really, it, it inspired me to dig deeper into vice history, um, you know, from discovering all these different Vahipana to learning about their place names. It, it truly showed the significance of the Aina we all depend on. And as I've learned in Kumu Kai's class, um, a term that comes up a lot is Hawaii Imiwa. And so roughly we can kind of think of that as to continually seek deeper knowledge. And so this is a concept that I found was definitely present in this project. Um, and because of the Hilo story, my project, uh, I'll never look at Hilo the same. You know, for example, I, I passed um, the soccer fields near Kamehameha Avenue every day on my way to college. And, um, it only reminds me of, you know, the one, the once majestic wild llama that was situated there. And so I found a history exists in so many layers. And it's really, to me, it's only inspiring to, for everyone to just contribute to the knowledge of all of our kupuna and all of our um, kama'aina past, present, and future. And so I'd just like to say mahalo um, to everyone and that, uh, you know, I'm forever proud to call myself a kama'aina of Hilo. Mahalo Nui, Jared. Um, that was that was great. Um, yeah, just uncovering the, all the layers. Uh, we couldn't hope for anything better than that. Um, our next presenter is Emmeline Ellsbury. She is from my 284 class. So this was an entirely online class uh, that this group took on the project through. So I'm um, really interested to hear from Emmeline and what you learned from the project. Go ahead. Aloha, um, my name is Emmeline. I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm majoring in medical anthropology with a minor in social justice. 
Uh, I was assigned the Ahupua'a of Waikia as well, um, and the specific areas of Moku'ola, um, which can be translated to island of life, right? It was a um, place of refuge and a place where people would go uh, to heal and the waters around it um, were very sacred and considered to have um, great healing properties. Um, and as well as the specific areas of um, Kaula Inaivi, which can be translated to dry the bones um, because it was uh, one of the places where the bones of chiefs were dried and also where um, umbilical cords would be placed, um, partly under rocks to be um, safe from rats. And um, also um, Makaoku, uh, that was another area that uh, we researched in my group. Um, and so that area was really interesting um, to, to learn more about. It was the site of uh, a very famous heiau called Kua Ka'ana uh, Nu'u. Um, and that was really amazing to be um, learning about all of that history, which I, I obviously had no idea about. Um, and I've just, it's been, I'm really grateful to, that I had the opportunity to participate in this project. And I, um, I'm so honored that I, I can be a part of this panel and be here today. Um, I learned a lot about history, like the fact that it is really multi-layered and the importance of uh, visiting multiple sources, many sources in order to um, kind of create um, a more accurate and a better picture of, of what you're looking at. I learned it's, it's kind of like, um, almost like diving for buried treasure like you never really know what you're gonna get. Sometimes uh, it could be trash, other times it could be gold, and other times it could be fragments of an artifact that you don't know yet how they fit together, but then as time goes on and you learn more, you see how they, um, how they go together. And so, uh, and honestly, while I was researching Hilo, um, I was also thinking about all of Hawaii's history that we were, we've been learning about in my, in Kumukai's class, and I was specifically thinking about Hawaii's um, colonial history and obviously the uh, illegal occupation that continues to this day. And I was thinking about how um, the erasing or the, you know, conveniently forgetting uh, the history of the Aina of the land um, has really been a, a, a tool of oppression and kind of an attack um, on Hawaiian identity and Hawaiian sense of belonging. So, um, for me, uncovering the history, uh, you know, uh, was the very rich ancient history was really a, a testimony to the fact that um, we're not in America. And so, and, and importantly, uh, learning, I learned about how in the process of the process of un, un, uncovering this history and learning about the history, thinking about the history um, is really an act of resistance politically, socially, culturally, and spiritually, and the um, immense importance of learning this history, knowing it, teaching it, uh, sharing it with others. I'm I'm really grateful that I get to um, share my knowledge now with with people who I meet, people who might not know the history. Um, so that's been awesome. And and then another thing that uh, that I gained. Uh, was just in my my personal relationship to uh, to the Aina, to the land, which has been really enriched by this project. And like with any relationship, knowing someone's past is really important in understanding who they are and, and why they are that way. And so knowing the history of the land is a key to fostering a healthy relationship with the land. That's one that's based off things like intimacy, compassion, and most importantly, respect. Um, which are all attributes that my participation in this project uh, have really been strengthened um, in that way and by uh, learning more about this area and my how my relationship uh, to the land has been enriched by it. Um, so mahalo nui loa. I'm very, very grateful to be here and to have uh, taken part in this. Mahalo, Emmeline. Uh, again, just beautifully said, all of you. Um, and uh, it's, it's really meaningful for me, too, to be hearing what you're gaining out of the project because, you know, there's those things that we hope that you get out of it, and then there's those intangibles 
that come along as well through the, the learning or educational process that are just so wonderful to hear about. Um, our next presenter is CJ or Kenneth Sweezy. Uh, we all call him CJ. Um, CJ was in our Hawaiian Kingdom course as well, but he also served an internship with this project and really helped us as kind of a project manager to, to try and keep track of all the information that was coming in and organizing it and, and keeping us going. So we wanted to hear a little bit from CJ about uh, his role in the project and, and what he learned from it. So CJ, the time is yours. Aloha everybody and I uh, just want a big mahalo to Kumukai, to Historical Hawaii Foundation and um, to Natalie and everybody else on Lokalani and um, all the students that was a part of this project and it was just a huge honor to be a part of this um, this uh, legacy for Hilo. Um, again, my name is Kenneth C.J. Sweezy. Um, I'm a history major um, focusing in Hawaii Pacific history. And this is actually my um, last semester as an undergraduate at UH Hilo. So it, it was really awesome to be a part of this. The, um, the Ahu Pua'a that I was a, a part of, or my group on research was P.I. Honua. And there was three of us, um, Robert Wheeler and um, Sheree Kaukami. And a few of the places that we um, had research in our, within our Ahu Pua'a was the Naha and Pinao Stones, which is located at the Hilo Public Library. Um, Kalakaua Park, which is dedicated to the Mo'i King Kalakaua um, and is um, was dedicated and to him during his time as a Mo'i. Um, also the federal building, um, which is now um, what is more well known as as, as the um, downtown Hilo post office. Um, the Hilo drugstore, which is, um, is not running no more, but you would know as if you would look at cronies, um, the sports bar down in downtown Hilo, you would see the sign Hilo drugstore next to there. Um, also Kaipoloa Landing, which um, is famous for the mo'olelo of how Hilo was named. And it talks about how Kamehameha went to go visit a friend down in, um, in Koloiki, which is Reed's Island. And um, he told his kane, um, don't, leave my, don't leave my canoe, but they got scared at one point. So, um, one one kane was just like oh how about we tie it with some lai and do this special braid and that braid was actually known from being from waipio and when kamehameha came back he got kind of angry at them like why you never listen to me uh, but um it came to be found that uh that um he told the one was like oh we wanted to know where you were and he he didn't he was like who made this braid and they uh, he said i and then um and then kamehameha was actually like oh you pretty akamai so that's why Hilo is known for its, its twisting of a special braid. Um, also, we researched Conan's building, um, the Burns and Pacific building, and also the Pacific Tsunami Museum. Um, and each of these, uh, each of us um, did had different methods of how we did our research and what, how we went about doing that. Um, as like uh, my other classmates has mentioned, we, we use a lot of um, newspapers, um, going into Ulukao and Papakilo, which are um, uh, Hawaiian um, sources that you can use to uh, look at um, if there's any old um, Ola Lohova Inu Pepa that was um, that um, published any of these um, Vahipanas. And um, also for, for myself um, as an intern, um, Kumukai um, had sent me down to the Lyman Museum where I had interned the, the year before and had me look at historical photos, which was such a rewarding experience um, to just be in there and to be able to go and touch their collection and also the Christensen collection, which the UH Hilo holds, um, history um, program holds, which um, also had photos in there that I looked at. And um, that was just such a cool project because I when I looked at these places, I was like, wow, this is how Hilo was back in the day. And you see the transition in time of how Hilo came to be today. Um, and as uh, Stephanie, um, Stephanie and um, Jared and Emmeline has shared, um, there is a deeper layer when you start learning the history and mo'olelo of the, um, the ahupua'as that we researched. And um, learning about my hometown really changed the way when I'm driving around in town, like Jared was saying. and you know, you pass certain places and you're like, you look at it from a different perspective. And um, as the song goes, Hilo is so much more than a rainy old town. So um, also um, this project was also a way of me giving back to this community. The Pihonua also holds my alma mater and I think Jared's alma mater, Hilo High, 
the high school we graduated from. Um, and it's just, when I was uh, presented with Kumukai to do this project, I was like, wow, this is such a great way to give back to the beautiful community that I'm so, so proud to be a part of. And um, it's also a way to give back to my Ohana, who is from here, um, and to one day show like my grandfather and to show him, hey, Papa, look, look at this project that we did. Look at this place that you call home. And he, you know, he tells me plenty of stories of back in the day. So this, you know, learning about things from back in the day was just, um, it just ties everything together. And um, as uh, Kualoha Ho'omana Vanui says, um, Olelo is a form of remembering, retelling, and reclaiming of Hawaiian culture. And this project was a big part of that to give back and um, to um, to just perpetuate this place that we call home. So mahalo and um, thank you for all, all of you for attending. Mahalo CJ. Um, just really grateful for all of your participation and contributions to the project as well. Our next presenter is Kalehulu Victor. Kalehulu was also in the online History 284 class and we'll let her share some of her manao now. Aloha, uh, my name is Kali Hulu. Um, I, I was in a group with my partner. We were just a pair, Tori Lee Castro, and we had the opportunity to research Kuku'o, which is between Waiakea and there are two Kuku'os. So we were wedged right in between Waiakea and the other Kuku'o. And um, if you've ever seen a map of Kukuo, it's a very tiny sliver of land. And we had a really hard time trying to find information just because it was a small piece of land that stretched all the way down from the ocean all the way up to, uh, it was, when we looked at the map, it was deep in the forests. It looks like it was where saddle roads could be spanning up that far. And so, there was a lot of communication between me and Kumukai just asking her for help. And, but um, Tori and I kind of got our way around it. She's not a, she's not a history major. She, her major is in, um, it's in, I believe, psychology and administration of justice and minds is in communication. So when we started this, we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> We kind of just had to find our footing and kind of just go from there. But eventually we we got our way around it. And um, she was in charge. We found her, our place in and how our group worked. She would do more of the interviewing and the photography. So she was the one who went out into the community and did more of the hands-on kind of work. And I did more of the library research. And like I said before, communicating with Kumukai them. And um we started with the books in the library trying to find um, information, but then eventually we hit a very big wall. We couldn't find uh, any information, but it wasn't until she started interviewing people and I started looking at maps that we started to find some progress. And um, one of the biggest things that I, that I really loved about this project was that I always knew about the story of Ruth Ke'eli Golani laying down in front of a lava flow and it coming to a stop. And I knew it was in Hilo and I knew that it was a very big story. They have Oli's about it, they have Hula about it. It's, it's a very big story, but I never knew where exactly she laid and where exactly the lava flow stopped. And when we were in the Hawaiian studies one day, um, I had asked the librarian for help and she pulled out a map. We we're looking at the map and the map had a lava flow that flowed through Kukuo. And I asked her, what is, what is this lava flow? Where, 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 um, what year was it? Is this the one from the stories about Ruth Ke'eli Koleni? She goes, I don't know. She goes, but I know that somebody big, somebody big came here for that, for that lava flow. And so we started doing research and it came to be that that lava flow on the map, it was marked as the 1881 lava flow. And Ruth Ke'eli Koleni came down for a lava flow in 1881. And she had laid down in a gulch. And in our Ahupua'a, there was a gulch where one of the fingers had stopped. So we're like, um, 
I think that's the word. And so we ended up pulling information from websites and I ended up, um, I had done a play about it in high school. And so our Kumu had taught us a, um, an Oli for it. So I looked up the Oli, I put it all together and finding all of those pieces and watching all of that, it was like history coming alive. And I saw the Mo'olalo come to life and just, it was amazing because not all of these, <clears throat> not all of these sources will put the pieces together for you. You're going to find the pieces. And as you put them together and as you piece them together, the puzzle will come together and it'll create this beautiful picture that we call history. And that is what I loved about this, this, um, this project. What I love, what I found that I love to learn about history because this taught me how to research for, for history, how to look at your history, how to find your history, how to find your, your, your roots, you know, and especially me being from Nanakuli, from Oahu, I don't know a lot about Hilo, but coming to Hilo, um, Kumukai giving us the chance to do this kind of research helped me to dig down into like put my foot on the ground and dig deep and find all of those important mo'olalo that not um not a lot of that you might not hear a lot of but you can find out where it happened and how exactly it happened and so I do want to mahalo everyone here for coming everyone for listening as well as Kumukai for giving giving us this project, giving us the opportunity to take this project on. And for everyone else who helped this make, make this happen, Lokelani, everybody, and um, really helping us to find our history and bring it to life, like how I explained. But yeah, mahalo. Uh, mahalo. Um, I just, yeah, love your, your recognition of how history can come to life. It just... Um, it was beautifully told as well. Mahalo Nui. Um, our last student presenter for the panel today is Jacob Perry. And I tasked Jacob with a, a slightly different kuleana for this project. Um, he served as an intern as well, <clears throat> excuse me, but his, um, his responsibility was to do some research uh, on the sort of overview of Hawaii's history. And what you'll get to see on the, uh, the story map is a, uh, Right now, there's two essays there, and there will be at least one more that cover an overview of Hilo history, uh, early history, 19th century, and then the 20th century, just to kind of, you know, bring everything together that's happening within the story map itself, looking for some of those connections. So, Jacob, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your journey with this project. Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jacob Perry, and um, I was born in Maui, but I was raised in Hilo. Um, I live and work on Oahu right now, but you know I consider myself a Hilo boy, and um, yeah, I, you know I just want to say that I'm very grateful to Kumukai uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I've taken, I've probably taken four or five of her classes, um, and it's just kind of funny how I stumbled on this one. I um, just kind of needed one more, uh, three more credits. I needed one more class to stay a full time student. And I was just kind of talking about her if there was something I could do with Hawaiian history, um, I'm a history major. And so she gave me this opportunity um, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, and I really valued uh, what I got out of it. Um, so yeah, I was kind of tasked with a, a larger um, overviews of Hilo. You know, I was tasked more with, you know, the a breadth versus some of the in-depth um, specific locations that, that other students did. Um, and so that was very challenging um, to kind of compile individual locations and you know place-based histories in, into a narrative um, that I could share. I could share with the public, but a lot of it was very worthwhile. Um, just as, as an example, one that that I remember and I enjoyed researching about during um, in, in the first essay, um, you know, ancient history of Hilo was about how after the Battle of on Uanu, on Oahu, King Kamehameha returns to the Big Island to suppress a rebellion that had been taking place 
in Hilo. And after he had done so, he had made his uh, rural residence at Pio Pio. And he ruled the he ruled the newly consolidated kingdom from Hilo. And so for a period of about six years, um, in the 1790s, Hilo was considered to be the first capital of the kingdom of Hawaii. And it was in Hilo that he um, constructed and, and built his fleet of war canoes that would travel to Kauai unsuccessfully, but two times he would try to leave Hilo and invade a Kauai. And um, that was just very uh, rewarding to research that and to you know come across those things and to kind of fill in the blanks um, and you know fill in the gaps of connecting all the different parts of Hilo in, in you know into a narrative. And well, I guess my biggest takeaway on top of that would be really during the 19th century um, Hilo essay that I did, it was really interesting and significant how much that Hilo represented Hawaiian history as a whole. And I thought that was kind of my biggest takeaway. Hilo had, um, you know, from the missionary uh, settlement that was established very early on, you know, shortly after the missionaries came, um, highly church, uh, the highly mission, as it was called in that time, you know, that that's still, um, that church still stands in, and is in operation today. And then transitioning into, you know, the port town that Hilo was in the mid um, 19th century in the 1840s and 50s as whaling kind of comes in. And so to see the transformation of that as that industry takes a hold of, of um, Hawaii's economy. And then once more, another transition to the sugar industry and, and the proliferation, the pro proliferation of plantations um, in all sections of Hilo, Hilo Paliku and Hilo Hanakahi and especially in Hilo One. Um, and that for me to kind of trace that um, not only to trace that about Hilo, but to fit that into the larger context of Hawaiian history as a whole, I thought was very interesting. Um, and then lastly, that kind of takes, you know, that kind of took me to the last chapter of what Hilo is today and with all of its development and um, the community that I was lucky enough, that I am lucky enough to be a part of and to have been um, raised in. And, um, Again, I just want to extend my uh, sincere appreciation to Kumukai and to the Hawaii Historic uh, Foundation for making this possible. And I'm very proud to be a part of it. Mahalo, Jacob. Um, yeah, and if, if I can just, I know we're getting close to running out of time. So I just wanna say mahalo again to all of the student presenters. And on behalf of all of my students, I, you know, you can see, I think, or hear from their comments, how rich of an experience this has been for us. We've all gained and learned so much through it. And so um, I, I just really want to sincerely mahalo Historic Hawaii Foundation for reaching out to us in the first place and letting us be a part of this project and have this opportunity. So to Andrea and Michelle uh, and to Loki Lonnie Brandt uh, of ASM Affiliates for you know, supporting us and guiding us and contributing so much as well. And then also to Natalie and Drake at Cultural Surveys Hawaii uh, for putting all of our work together onto the story map. It, it really is an exciting uh, project that we've been a part of and, and to be at this juncture now where it's, we can see the fruits of, of all of those labors is, is just really wonderful. So mahalo nui and, and good job to all my students. You guys did great, mahalo. Mahalo Nui, Lo Kumukai, Lokilani, and all of our student panelists. Thank you so much for sharing your mana'o with us this afternoon. I'm truly inspired by you all, and I'm grateful for all the time you have devoted to creating this incredible story map that will live on and share the beauty, magic, and history of Hilo. Um, so the Hilo story map is live. Um, I think Andrea had put the link in the chat. It will also be up on our website sometime today. Um, and everyone um, who registered will also be receiving a follow-up email within the next couple of days. And I will make sure to include the link there so that you can view the story map. 
Um, also, if you go um, on our HHF website under the Heritage Tourism tab, we also have our story map of the Capital District and also Holly Eva if you wanted to check those out. Um, so thank you again for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and the panel discussion. I'd like to give a big thanks to my colleague, Andrea Nandoskar, who has been providing technical support. Um, we also invite you to join us next week, Tuesday, December 14th from 5 to 6.15 for a virtual discussion exploring how land is a repository of the past. So registration information can be found on our website. If you would like to support HHF and our work, visit the Join Us section at historicholeyou.org. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and wishing the best for you and your loved ones. Take care and mahalo nui loa. Thank you all so much. Michelle, we have time for a couple of questions. We have five more minutes. Oh, okay. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, let's see, let me just scroll through the chat box. And Kumukai, I sent you a couple of questions that came through if you want to take a look at those. Sure. Um, so the, the quick one, the source of the 1891 map of Hilo, it was a government survey map and it can be found through uh, Hawaii State Archives. I don't have the registration number handy, um, but it's actually a digitized map that can be easily found through their website well, somewhat easily found through their website. <laughs> um, and maybe, Loki, you want to add to that? Yeah, um, so it actually is in the Department of Accounting and General Services Land Survey Division as part, of the, as part of their registered map collection. And that particular registered map number is 1561. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Loki, Lonnie, there's a question about the term P.O. P.O., did, have you seen that question? Um, the, the meaning. Um, so that was something I actually talked about in my uh, thesis. And, um, you know, there's sort of a literal meaning, just like with many Hawaiian words, and then there's sort of a kauna, hidden meaning. Um, you know, it's literal meaning means arch. P.O. Is, is, you know, means arch. So it's sort of like this double arch. Um, now, the land division itself is actually sort of arc shaped if you look at it from this really literal um, you know, standpoint. But the term PO in Hawaiian ha also has to do with sort of the ali'i uh, mating practices as well. Um, when a full-blooded um, brother and sister of a particular PO rank came together, they would have a, their offspring would be a really high rank. Um, and so there's uh, some, some thoughts and some ideas of the area, because it's association with Hawaiian, the E may have some kauna, um, and the name may allude to some of those, um, the, the E may practices of that time. Okay. Mahalo. Um, the other question, maybe this is a little bit for Historic Hawaii Foundation as well. Um, the question, well, I wanna read this whole thing. This is from Angela Neller. Thank you, Angela. Uh, she said, I think Jared's comment, how will we never look, how he will never look at Hilo the same, uh, really shows the importance of projects like this to help keep Hawaii, uh, Hawaii in light of development. So how can we get more projects like this to be done in conjunction with archaeology to meet development requirements? Um, I mean, I, I can just say, like, as somebody who's teaching at the university would love to continue doing or having more projects like this that involve students in the research process, as I think you can all hear and, and have seen, um, the value in it is just immeasurable. Um, how we then connect to um, projects under development and, um, and meet those requirements and, and uh, connect with the archeologies and, and affiliates like yourself Okay, Lonnie, I, I don't know how we formally do that or if it's just a matter of making sure we have those relationships in place. Um, I, I think when there's, for certain projects where there might be mitigative measures that need to be, you know, projects where things, um, impacts to historic properties need to be mitigated. Um, this is, you know, an, an example of something that could be considered a form of mitigation as sort of a trade-off, you know, um, in lieu of development, this is some of the outcomes that can happen. 
Um, and this is, this is a very creative thing. It's a big undertaking, but um, it, there's, there's always a possibility for something like this to be recommended as an action uh, from, you know, mitigative action uh, yeah. for against a particular development. Yeah. Okay. Mahalo. I'm, so I haven't had a chance to look through all the chat, uh, but if we're, are we missing any other questions, Michelle or Andrea? I think those were the only ones I saw. Okay. Me too. I think, I think that was good. Okay. Well, mahalo again. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful and, and hopeful that for all of our students that this project has really helped to um, develop our sense of place, our sense of community and our connections to Hilo. And, you know, we, we hope that uh, it's done a little bit of that for you folks as well who have been here listening and, and attending today. We thank you for being here. Yeah, mahalo to everyone. I hope you all be inspired as I am. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you to all of the student panelists and Lokelani and Kumukai and Natalie for putting all of this together. I really appreciate everyone's help and devotion with this. So thank you so much.